I am the director of cell clinical laboratories in Florida, in New York, uh, also California. So sort of I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not practicing, I'm doing stuff. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that is going on for about 25 or 30 years that I've been seeing patients. I hate to call them patients, people. And I work with them over the phone, seeing their blood, having results, advising them. It costs you nothing to talk to me. I am not an attorney to, to add up the minutes. So once you have information there, you may have a crazy question that you always wanted to ask, but you know whom to ask, and it won't cost you anything, call me up. There's a very important thing that I want to share with you, which is radioactivity. Anybody know what that is? Radiation, ionizing radiation. You all know that radioactivity, radiation is one of the best known and most studied carcinogens. Radioactivity causes cancer, there is no doubt about it. <coughs> you also know that a lot of medical, thank you, medical procedures involve include radiation. Starting with the mammograms to the CT, you know, the CAT scan, the x-rays, the tooth x-ray, whatever. And these things have, have been used and are used almost indiscriminately. So my patients don't do that, or at least, or most, they stop doing it. How many times I see a breast cancer patient, patient, <laughs> a patient not usually is not very patient, and I'm asking, so have you, have you had your mammogram? And the person is very humble and raised, oh yes, I just had one. Okay, and how many of those did you have? Well, you know, I had it for years. How many years? Well, I had it five, six years, every year, sometimes twice a year because something there they wanted to see or decide what it is. Okay, so now you have cancer. Also, radiologists who do these things, they are ignoring the fact that there is a specific gene called BRCA gene. You heard about it, the breast cancer gene, BRCA1, BRCA2. And those who have this gene are so sensitive to radiation that actually a dental x-ray can turn these genes on and cause breast cancer and also uh, you know, uterine cancer. But they don't, they don't worry about it. I had a patient from uh, Melbourne, uh, this, this young lady, she was, what, 38 years old. She knows that her family has BRCA, BRCA genes and she has it. Her father has it, he has uh, some kind of a cancer. Her uncle has it, the same family line, and she has it, but she had breast cancer. And so she's sitting in my office, and I'm asking her, so now what do they want you to do? Well, I'm, they want me to be back for another mammogram for, for the other breast, because they already had one removed. So do they, or do you know that that extra mammogram could be <laughs> detrimental to your health? to your life, actually. Well, she didn't know that, nor those who do these things, they either ignore it or they don't know that. So we have to be extremely careful with these things. And, and the CT scans, okay, that's a ton of radiation. What it is, is hundreds, if not thousands, of x-rays. This machine is going through your body, or you're going <laughs> under it, and you know, but three millimeter is about that big, that's about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe even less. So this machine is slicing your body, do, taking pictures of that tiny increment. So you're getting a whole lot of radiation in that one. Not too long ago, the doctors offered a full body scan. Does anybody remember that? Okay, well that was by a CT. You got into that cave thing, whatever that was, and you went, then they put you through this uh, full body radiation. Every part of your body, none of it escaped. Now it's been discontinued because it was found that this CT full body scan caused cancer. Several people came down with cancer, which was directly related to this kind of diagnostic workup. So that just that you know, I am, we are at the American Metabolic Laboratories offer a, 
a biochemical full body scan, but that's without radiation, we're looking at your blood. And this biochemical full body scan is something that one physician called a biochemical fortune telling. This happened in Puerto Rico. I gave a lecture there once, it's been four or five years ago. And we go out all in the hall, doctors all, all around me, and this guy is pointing a finger at me and says, hey, Dr. Shindel, what you're doing is biochemical fortune telling. I'm looking at him, yeah, that's pretty cool, I like that. So he says, well, you telling us what our patients will become sick of 10 years from now? So he's pointing a finger at me. I said, yeah, Doc, you heard me. I presented my case. I had all the slides, you know, the PowerPoint and all that. So yeah, that's what it is. So this is what he says. Well, you know, we doctors want a sick patient now. We want to see him, we treat him, they go home, they come back, they go home, they come back. This is what he said exactly. I'll never forget it if I live a thousand years, which I won't. He said, we don't care what happens to them 10 years from now. I mean, this just killed me. I, I say, okay, doc, goodbye. And I, I sense that a lot of, it's not all professionals are like that, but this guy, was like that, and probably a whole lot of them are like that. Well, I care what happens to you, to me, 10 years from now, and in fact, I'm counting on much more. If you remember in the Bible, God says, man is evil from his earliest youth, that's in Genesis. Let man not be mortal. Remember, characters lived for thousands of years, whatever, Methuselah, what his name is, Enoch, in others, it says, let men not be mortal, let men live 120 years. And you know something? Nobody lives 120 years because we mess it up. We cannot follow the steps which would be comparable with a healthy, long life. Mm -hmm.